Hello there, everybody. I hope you've all had a great work week. So, hey, marketers, have you newsjacked the new Barbie movie yet? Oh, wait a minute. Am I newsjacking the Barbie movie? Ramp with? Am I doing that? It all feels a bit meta at the moment. Anyway, this summer's number one movie has sure spurred a lot of content talking about how you, too, can create marketing just like the Barbie movie did. You want to know more? Well, this is news that you need to lead in marketing. Let's roll. Hello there, everybody. Robert Rose here with the content and marketing strategy news. It is what's new, but most importantly, yep, you know the drill by now. It's what's important in our world of marketing. And you can go subscribe to the best of best practices by heading on over to contentmarketinginstitute.com. So this last weekend, Barbie, the new movie, opened to a record-setting $155 million. What's more, Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer movie collected a remarkable $80 million over the same weekend. This marks the transformation of what has quite literally become a meme of pairing these two movies together in the fourth biggest overall weekend in cinema history. The brilliance of the marketing of Barbie, including the Barbenheimer means, should really come as no surprise. I mean, it might feel to you just now as if Mattel's Barbie is just getting introduced to the world as a cinematic brand, but of course nothing could be further from the truth. Mattel knows one thing, it is marketing and media, and in fact, there are more than 40 films that make up what's known as the Barbie Cinematic Universe, and yes, that's really a thing, the BCU, as it were. They've been producing movies for the last 22 years. But of course, this latest premiere, A-List Outing, if you will, starring Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling, the teams responsible for marketing have really outdone themselves in both content and marketing. From an incredible social campaign product pairing with uh, car companies and Xbox-themed console, the Barbie Playhouse design to the Barbie-themed hotel where the cast was interviewed, and even adorning an actual house as the Barbie Dream House in Malibu. It's also, by the way, available as an Airbnb listing. The marketing and experiential design has been nothing short of breathtaking. Now, of course, all that marketing activity has inspired, well, news about the prowess of the marketing team and, and the many marketers and products and services companies that are now newsjacking types of content to highlight that news. There are headlines such as, Five Lessons You Can Learn from That Barbie Movie Marketing, or Lessons in Innovative Branding for Barbie, or Come On, B2B Marketing, Let's Go Party, Lessons from Barbie. And finally, perhaps my favorite of all of them is the Barbie newsjacking article about the opportunity to newsjack articles. Yeah, the meta is high in that one. And yes, I'm self-aware enough to recognize that everything that I'm covering this week is possibly newsjacking, but a little more on that in a moment. Now, these are all wonderful and I'm sure well thought through in their own individual ways, but I'll be curious if many of them are seen as successful because for me, it always brings up some takeaways about what newsjacking is, generally speaking, and that intrigues me. Of course, newsjacking is the term made popular by my friend David Meerman Scott more than a decade ago, and it's the idea that you can inject your ideas into breaking news and add your own spin to it. The idea is that if you can draft, you know, kind of like drafting like bicycle or auto racers might say, behind a fast-moving article to get your specific message out to a wider audience. But here's the thing to me. It's the injecting your story into the story that's really important there. You see, what makes newsjacking really work is that it's much like other elements of great content. It's when you bring your angle or your point of view to the piece in a very specific way that makes other people want to explore that angle in addition to what's being explored in the breaking news. In other words, how do I cleverly use the news to make people want to cover my story? Put simply, and my take, when newsjacking is done really well, it's not just taking the breaking news and covering it or providing perspective on the news itself. It is rather asking ourselves how our unique point of view could be relevant to this particular story so that we can inject our idea so that other people may want to include it in theirs. And that, to me, is what makes many of the recent newsjacking events on Barbie kind of, well not newsjacking, or terribly unique for that matter. By providing the lessons learned from the news or some kind of different perspective on the news, you're not really injecting you into the story. 
I think of great examples of newsjacking, such as, well, when a large technology company gets acquired and the CEO of a much smaller competing company takes the opportunity to not just cover the acquisition, but provide their own vision of the state of the industry. Or, for example, this amazing ad from Aviation Gin created after the disastrous Peloton ad over the holidays. It was just simply the actress at the commercial sitting quietly at a bar as she drinks gin, aviation gin, of course, and her friends tell her she looks great. Nothing more needed to be said. It was injecting their story. Or maybe one of my favorite examples of all time of newsjacking, when an insurance company in Australia heard about the very hyped up trip that President Obama was making down to the land down under, they issued an insurance policy and associated press release that insured President Obama against a, yes, crocodile attack. It got them coverage in all kinds of mainstream media. So my take is that it's a subtle but very important difference when we're thinking of newsjacking. It's not about just covering the news or simply covering the news about the news and the hope of latching on to some popular concept, add a topical flavor to the content as it were. Rather, is how can we cleverly insert our point of view, our brand, or even our product or service into the news so that other people want to share what we have to say because it's a completely different take than the news itself. So with that said... Is what I'm doing now newsjacking? Hmm, maybe not. But what do you think? How are you newsjacking? And how are you using breaking news to get your content to pierce the noise? And this, well, this may not be newsjacking, but it's five minutes of what you need to lead in marketing strategy. I'm Robert Rose, and remember, as always, it's your story to tell. If you can inject it into the news, it might just help you tell it well. I'll see you next week.